Welcome back, team. This is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. Last time we discussed UGENs, and more specifically about the ADSR UGEN. I want to talk more about UGENs, and we'll get back to them soon, but first I want to take a quick detour and talk a little bit about functions. For this lesson, you're going to want to have the code up from our last lesson, lesson 9. If you didn't follow that lesson, the code is up on GitHub, you can download it there. I'll post a link in the description. First, what is a function? A function is, at its core, simply a way to reuse code. You saw in the last tutorial how we had to copy and paste our code over and over to get it to do the, nearly the same thing multiple times. Functions give us a way to do much better than that. Let's start with a simple example. Let's start with an empty file. Now type the following, fun int multiply open parenthesis int x comma int y close parenthesis. Now open some curly braces. Let's make a logging statement that says, I'm in the multiply function, and now type return x asterisk y semicolon. Now let's run this program. You'll see that nothing happens. That's because of the thing that we mentioned in the loops tutorial called the flow of control. The flow of control skips functions until you call them. Now let's make a logging statement outside the function, and in it we'll type x comma y comma multiply x comma y, and run this again. So what happened here? It called the function inside the logging statement, which called the flow of control to shoot up to the top of the function. Then it executed what was in that function. All functions have what's called a signature in a standard format. They start with the word fun, then the return type, then the function name, followed by a list of parameters. The return type is the type of the variable Chuck will expect that function to return. Remember that Chuck is strongly typed, which helps it catch errors when you mess up. The function name is the word you will use when you call it elsewhere in the program. The parameter list is a list of inputs the function will use to do its work. These parameters are required when you call the function in your program. Each parameter must have a type and a name of its own. In our multiply example, the return type was int, the function name was multiply, and then the parameters were an int named x and another int named y. In the body of that function, it has a logging statement and then it has a return statement where we told it to return the product of x and y. Now let's jump back into the code from our previous tutorial. Let's make the beat last one second instead of two so we can play it back faster. Here's how it sounds. Now let's use a function to clean up this code. So what we have here is we have the same lines of code put in here multiple times, which tells us that we can have a function so that we can remove some duplicated code. What I'm going to do is outside of our while loop, I'm going to create a new function. You start it with fun, like I said before. This function doesn't need to return anything because we don't need to use any value that's uh, executed or that's created inside this loop. So I'm just going to use a return type called void, which means don't return anything. And then I'm gonna call it play to bars, which is the name of the function, and I'm going to say that it takes a int of position and a int called chord, and that is an array. And then I'm going to make my curly braces, and then I'm just going to take everything that is here. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to place that right here. And so position is already used in here, so we don't even need to change that name. It's going to take this position, and that the position that gets called into the function is going to be uh, used down here. Um, we're going to need to use the word chord here because uh, previously we speci specified which chord. Now we're going to do that when we call the function. So we're just going to change this, this name to chord, and we're going to change this one's name to chord as well, and try to spell it right. Save that thing here. Now we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to call, call play two bars with a position of zero and a uh, that use the minor chord. And if I save it up and I play it, we should hear what we heard before. And we do, which means that now we can whack all this code. We're going to all this code that we had. We're going to remove it all, and we're just going to call play two bars.
four times. I'll save it up and then let's call it again. Run it our program again. So you can see it's much, much more concise and much more easy to read. And it's much easier to extend too. What if we wanted to uh, wanted to keep going? Let's make a second section. We'll do play two bars and we'll say that now we're gonna do a minus seven minor chord. And then we'll do play two bars again. And we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do uh, minus two of a major. And then we'll go play two bars of, uh, we'll, then we'll do three of major. And then we'll do play two bars of minus five again. Once again, a major. And so now we've, uh, we've doubled the length of our composition, but we only had to write a little bit of code. We don't need all these extra spaces, so I'm gonna get rid of those. So yeah, we've doubled the length of our composition with a very small amount of work. Let's play it again. So, as you can see, functions are one way to make your code much more concise and readable. In Chuck, they also make a bunch of other things possible, but for now let's stick with this and get to those things later. In this tutorial, we discussed functions and how they help you clean up your code. In our next tutorial, we'll talk about reverbs and delays.